All right, guys, so I wanted to talk in this video about another spring tactic um, that I really enjoy. Uh, granted, it's something that I haven't done as much of in the past few years. Uh, back when I fished the college series, um, this technique was, I mean, a staple. Uh, traveled all over the country and almost always had a chatterbait on deck. I did really well um, in a couple of tournaments with it uh, at Lake Seminole and Winya Bay. Um, it caught some of the key fish in those tournaments and um, in fact it had me weigh the biggest fish I've ever weighed in on stage during during a big tournament um, which was a 7-2 a on Winya Bay and uh, that was that was pretty sweet um, so a chatterbait definitely is kind of near and dear to my heart and it's something that again you can throw this thing anywhere and you'll catch fish um, back when I was doing more kayak fishing during medical school um, you know a chatterbait was something that I threw basically any place I could get my kayak in and I had some crazy days on on a chatterbait uh, catching fish in small lakes and ponds and in in the river here in Augusta um, I've caught some giants kind of everywhere I've tried it so it's it's definitely something that's versatile you can do it pretty much year round um, so I want to talk about it so uh, the chatterbait is one setup that I think rod is absolutely crucial uh, some people may argue that it doesn't matter um, again any all-purpose rod you can catch fish with a chatterbait there's there's no doubt but a chatterbait for whatever reason is just a very particular bite and so having the perfect rod for it is is essential in my mind so i've gone through a couple different ones um, this one i'm not sponsored by them but Arc makes a really good chatterbait rod for the price. Um, you'll hear guys talk about the Evergreen Combat Stick, uh, which is a pretty darn pricey rod. And I've messed around with one. It's super nice. I just, personally, I don't uh, spend a whole ton of money on my rod and reels when at all possible. So I um, like to keep things mostly budget friendly uh, and so this this is the Randall Tharp series this is actually the gen 1 there's a gen 2 out now um, but it's the B Hite so it's a 7 foot 4 uh, moderate fast and um, again that moderate fast I think is perfect for stuff like a chatterbait or, or a spinnerbait um, and so with a chatterbait you know there's a lot of different ways you can throw it there's really no and there's there's no wrong way, uh, but I like the seven four because typically, um, unlike a spinnerbait, I'm I'm casting my chatterbait kind of long ways. I'm throwing it down um, grass lines or into you know spawning flats or down shallow ditches, stuff like that. So that long rod helps you get a really good long cast. Um, and then it loads up really well. And I think that's the big thing with the chatterbait rod is you want a rod that loads up really good you'll have a lot of fish just absolutely destroy a chatterbait um, and if your rod is too stiff and because of the way this you know this blade works it they'll they'll munch that thing and then you go to set the hook and if you've got a really stiff rod this blade will blow their mouth open and a lot of times you won't get a good hook in them if you get a hook in them at all um, so having this this rod that really loads up nicely um, allows that I don't, you know, I, I can't begin to explain what, how it actually works, but um, in my mind it kind of lets that chatterbait get a little bit more settled in their mouth. Um, just that split second of this rod loading up, and then when you lean into them, a lot of the times you'll pin them. Um, you know, I've, I've fished a chatterbait on stiffer rods and I lost a lot of fish. I've also fished a chatterbait on a really flimsy like crankbait rod and that didn't work either because it's a pretty heavy duty hook so you still got to put the put the wood to them but you know it's you you got to have that kind of Goldilocks thing it's it's got to be just right so um, 
seven four you know i'd say anywhere seven three to seven six moderate fast is going to be what you want um speed is another thing with a chatterbait that i think matters i think a kind of a mid-speed reel this happens to be a, a 13 fishing concept z it's old um, if you can find them cheap now they're solid reels for the money um, if you can get them on clearance or whatever but this is a 6.6 .6 to one um, it's i think perfect for a chatterbait um, fast enough that you can catch up with fish that slack lines you but um, not so fast that you're blowing the chatterbait out all the time or uh, you know fishing it too fast um, line is is also something you want to consider um, most of the time with the chatterbait i'm going to throw it on 15 to 17 um, on 17 right now and uh, again that 15 to 17 is kind of my go-to for a lot of things. Uh, I'm a shallow water power guy, so I'm fishing a lot of heavy cover. Um, I'm always throwing this into something for the most part, um, whether it's stumps or uh, scattered wood, things like that, or uh, not on Clark's Hill, because we don't have grass, but other places that have grass, um, you know, throwing it through grass. So you want to have enough, you know, line that you're able to get a fish out of some heavy cover, because they're they're gonna eat it in the heavy heavy cover so much like a uh, spinnerbait you know a lot of times I'm gonna be throwing this thing at some type of target um, this happens to be a evergreen jackhammer again I'm not sponsored I pay 20 bucks or whatever it is for each one of these like everybody else um, they're just the best chatterbait um, I would say the best chatterbait that you can buy in the store um, when I used to throw a chatterbait religiously, um, I had some custom bladed jigs made from True Track Lures. Uh, Mr. Lionel Hollingsworth uh, was the one who made those. And again, not sponsored. Um, he's just a good guy. And uh, I caught a lot of really big fish on his uh, bladed jigs. So, um, you know, if you want to check him out, definitely do but any of the big box shatter baits you're going to catch fish whether it's berkeley or strike king or z-man evergreen whatever it is um, you can tie on any old shatter bait and you'll catch fish the the jackhammer it's it was you know just so refined and it's it is the perfect shatter bait i think for the vast majority of situations but um yeah, I mean, wh whatever one you, you like, if, if this $20 one isn't something you want to uh, toss out on 15-pound line, I, I get it. So, you know, get a cheap one. Either way, you'll catch fish. Um, trailers, you know, a lot of people will throw these kind of narrow minnow-style baits with the kind of... Um, kind of like the perf I don't know what you would call this but like the perforated type tail so it's not a paddle tail to where it's really erratic but you get a nice kind of little waving motion um, this is a Strike King blade minnow you could use Zocco's um, pretty much every saw plastic company has a chatterbait style trailer so that's what I've used and had success with so you know do throw whatever you want on there experiment a little bit have fun with it um, and that's that's the main setup um, so some stuff to be aware of with the chatterbait times I'm not going to throw it are when I'm fishing really heavy wood um, so a lot of times on Clark's Hill this time of the year um, there's I'm fishing a lot of wood so I love this thing when it's a little bit more open water or isolated wood, stuff like that. It's it's perfect. Um, or if I'm going down a line of Maiden's Cane or something like that, some of the very little grass we do have in Clark's Hill, um, you know, it's perfect. However, if there's wood around, this thing will find it. So I've found when I'm fishing laydowns, um, more dense bushes, stuff like that is when I'm going to reach for the spinner bait over the chatter bait. Um, again, it's a personal preference of mine. I just find that if I'm fishing a chatter bait through heavy wood for very long, I'm inevitably going to start getting stuck a bunch and getting hung up and having to fish it out and potentially messing up an area that I'm fishing. So I tend to avoid it, but again, that's just personal preference on my part. Um, Chatterbait's one of those things that I think, much like a spinnerbait, you can go pretty much anywhere and throw it um, and, and have some success. You know, some guys talk about this thing being 
what they use as a crankbait in clear water. Um, so it, it excels in muddy water because of this big thumping blade. Um, it also excels in clear water. Um, I've done well on Lake Seminole fishing it in clear water around grass. So it's very versatile. Um, you can fish it a hundred different ways and, and really none of them are wrong. You'll catch fish no matter what you do with it. Um, so if you've never fished a chatterbait before, um, definitely give it a try. It's a lot of fun. Again, much much like a spinnerbait or any other bait that moves a lot, you know, I would I would recommend trying to avoid getting stagnant and just doing that constant retrieve because you'll catch fish, it's true, but you know, bass uh, they react to stuff, you know, and they can't help it. So if you make this have a little bit of erratic action, if you blow it out really fast, you speed it up or you kill it, a lot of times that's when they're going to eat it. So um, you don't have to be, you know, going too crazy and doing the Alabama shake with it. But, um, you know, give it a little bit of action, give it a stop start, um, burn it really fast for, you know, five feet or something like that. And you'll be amazed how many times when you do that slightly erratic action, that's when you're going to get the bite. So um, give a chatterbait a try. You won't regret it. It's a lot of fun, really fun bite. If you're lucky enough to be on a lake where you have grass, um, man, it can be fun, especially especially in kind of the late winter and stuff when, the, when that grass is dying off. Oh man, it's great. So um, chatterbait's a blast. Um, another quick variation you can do on a chatterbait um, and that I used to do all the time and I, don't, I caught, I don't know how many fish on it, but if you remember the old Strike King Rage Blades, um, it's the blade that is on the back of the Z-Man Hellraiser now. Um, it's that goofy looking, like, basically it's a chatterbait blade, but the head is attached to the blade. Um, I'll find a picture or something and, and put it in the video, but if you can find one of those, take the skirt off because they're junk. Um, put a fluke on there and boy, you will be surprised how many fish you catch. Uh, I used to throw that in the rivers uh, around here. Like I said, a chatterbait can be super versatile. Definitely something you want to have in your arsenal. Um, you know, I don't throw it as much as I used to. Clarks Hill just doesn't set up for it quite as well as I would like. Um, like I said, I love throwing this thing around grass and without any grass for the last five or six years, it's just kind of fallen out of favor. Um, but I know guys who throw a chatterbait religiously and they catch Maybe not a lot of fish on it sometimes, but man, they'll catch some big ones. So definitely give a chatterbait a try and, uh, you know, find the right rod and uh, get to it. You'll catch plenty of fish.